Inside a forecast fragment, we're going to replace the M forecast adapter with a simple cursor adapter that will work with the new database code we've just added. This is another one we want to make sure we're using the v4 version. There we are. Make sure to select that in your list. So you can see we have a bunch of code that doesn't compile. Instead of this array adapter, let's switch our forecast adapter out with a new simple cursor adapter. Now, simple cursor adapter is pretty cool. It allows us to map columns within our database, which are in our weather contract, directly to widgets that are in our list items. So all looks pretty good, except that it won't quite compile because the stuff we're doing to start the detail activity isn't going to work. So for now, let's just put this away. We'll get back to that later. We have something that compiles, but we need to do something first. If we ran it now, we would still get nothing. The reason why we would still get nothing is we aren't doing anything in onload finish. In onload or reset, we might as well complete this by doing swap cursor with null. Our code should actually do something now. Let's try running it. And it looks terrible. What's in the database doesn't look anything like what's supposed to be on the screen. We need some formatting and settings help. More functions for our utility class. Get preferred location did look a bit lonely there, right? To help us out, we'll add another function to utility that tells us if metric is the current setting. We'll add a simple function to format the temperature. And we'll add a function to format the date. Now, interestingly enough, what kind of date is this? Well, we've got two options, Java util or java.sql. In this case, we actually want java.util. But we're missing yet another helper function. We'll add a function into weather contract that converts the db date text into an actual date object, opposite to the other contract function. So there we have it. How we store the date in the database is entirely encapsulated in the contract. So. Now we've got all that cool stuff, but how do we actually use it? Let's go back to our forecast fragment. It turns out there's a special callback for simple cursor adapter called viewbinder. Set viewbinder with a single function set view value. So inside of set view value, we're actually going to make really good use of those utility functions we just saw. First of all, we'll save off his metric. If we're using the temperature columns, then we just can format the temperature. Now that we've got set view value, let's put some cool stuff inside of it. You see that we use is metric when we're populating the temperature in our views, and we pass that into our new utility.format temperature function. So you can see that having these column indices here allowed us to make this function more efficient. And it'll also help when we move into lesson five. One of the things you notice is the layout height was really, really small. That's because it was just wrapping content. We can fix this by telling it to center our content and by setting the minimum height to the list preferred item height. This will make things look a little better as well, a lot more like our original layout. So let's take a quick look to see what all of this work has done for us. That's a little bit more like it. Now as you can see, we're seeing our forecast in the original way we anticipated. We can go to our settings and we can switch things on demand. But now we're in that same problem I had before. We can't do anything to get to the detail activity. Well, I'm going to have you fix that.